so uh, I'm going to introduce you uh, my uh, thesis, which I wrote on the Charles University. It's about uh, LGBT players and uh, about uh, their connection to the video games and about how um, uh, players can um, can feel about the issues connected with their uh, with their sexual orientation and uh, so on. So at the beginning, I will uh, play you a small uh, video. Okay, so <laughs> that's only a short video. I wanted to demonstrate that this picture uh, of uh, some homosexual pair in the video games was absolutely uh, unable to see in video games a uh, few, uh, few, uh, I'm sorry, few years ago. Uh, the icebreaker from uh, this point of view was the game uh, Dragon Age and uh, Mass Effect, uh, which offered uh, players optional homosexual romance with, with uh, companions in the game. The queer act became an act of will in this game. So if you want to be gay, you can. Concept which is very democratical on one side, but as mentions Gonsalvo, also very frustrating for the players. Because game describes another sexual orientation as a choice. And also this model is of representing uh, put homosexuality also in its kind of a closet. Anybody who doesn't want to see it and reflect it is not forced to do so. Thanks to the possibilities of cybertext, it is invisible again as it used to be many, many years uh, ago. And there are questions started. Is this really unique way of representation of LGBT people reflected by them with a pleasure or with doubts? And anyway, who are the LGBT players? And uh, I decided to make a qualitative analysis of this problem. I chose six LGBT players and uh, I was speaking with them about the aspect of homosexuality uh, in video games. For choosing the gamers, there were three uh, points um, needed to be fulfilled. Uh, all of the gamers must have been the members of LGBT community, that's clear. The gamers must have had such experience to assign themselves as gamers. And finally, the gamers must have uh, had uh, some experience with playing with these uh, games, uh, which have this homosexual content, and it's Dragon Age or Mass Effect. Uh, and the interviews had uh, three parts. Uh, in the first, there was explored how gamer, uh, ref how gamers reflect its own homosexuality and how it, uh, uh, how is this sexual orientation uh, re reflected in his or her uh, gaming experience. The main goal of this was to find out uh, if video games forms the meaning about uh, questions of sexual orientation and if they are at least anyhow connected. The second part was about the experience with playing as gay character in a video game. There was a quest to find out if playing the LGBT character changed the style of playing the game general, generally by the gamer and what were the most important issues uh, which he or she reflected. And the third part aimed on the reflection of representation of the LGBT minority in video games and if the unique way of depicting homosexuality in video games is for a community valuable or not. And so what were the results? As Guy says, video games have a big potential to educate people and to give them the opportunity to try new social roles. By the interactivity, pe by the interactivity people can better absorb and fix each impression and knowledge. All of the interviews said that they were used to play video games since their early childhood. But none of them said that these video games would let them to think about their sexuality. Mainly, as for example, Peter described, uh, because generally the games during the time of their adolescence were not connected with the issue of the sexuality. Simply said, most of the games were asexual. So we can say that video games were not a tool uh, for realizing the people's sexuality. But when uh, there was a time when they were sure of their sexual orientation, uh, the thinking about video games changed a bit. The biggest problem for all of the players was uh, the lack of LGBT views 
in most of the video games. So mm, they have started to invent their own uh, world. And to do so, there were these steps. So the first one was uh, inventing a hero who would be sexually attractive uh, for them. So one of the interviewees said that uh, he found himself that he was stripping down uh, his playable hero and then uh, he was running around uh, all over the, the online world uh, in, I don't know, it was in World of Warcraft or whatever it was. So that was one way. The second step was a kind of uh, interactive um, queer reading or better said queer acting. Uh, no matter that there are no official possibilities to behave as a homosexual, you can invent your own stories uh, between the video game's characters in your head uh, or during the playing. Some of the players sometimes are during the non-speaking parts of uh, our RPG games speaking loudly uh, um, instead of the heroes and physically uh, are putting their hero to the NPC to make an impression of closeness of both characters as you can uh, see on this quote of uh, Katerina. And the third way how to improve the game is to play as another gender. That's uh, in fact my own experience. Uh, so you can play uh, and I used to, uh, to, uh, to play uh, as a woman and then I could have um, uh, quite um, supported uh, connection and uh, relationship with some uh, main character in the game. So generally we can say that gay gamers reflect the issues around homosexuality in the video games and they want to put the LGBT content into the games. But how does it look like when there is the offi uh, official possibility to play uh, uh, the LGBT character? So there were big differences between each interviewees. Uh, some of them were absolutely swallowed by the option of homosexual romance in games Dragon Age or Mass Effect. Some of them were able to quote the sentences of the favorite character from some scene long time after the playing the games. Uh, for example, Vojta mentioned. Uh, he, he said that uh, he was faithful to one of the character in Mass Effect even before there was a a real possibility to have a gay romance with him. That was the case of character Kaidan Alenko, the one you could see uh, in the video at the beginning. And uh, you can have a gay romance with him uh, as late as in the third edition of the game, so not at the beginning. And also the possibility of uh, homosexual romance changed uh, a lot uh, the style of playing romances in the game. Gamer Matje, before uh, there was a possibility of gay romance in Mass Effect, uh, he practiced heterosexual romances. And he was very promiscuous. Uh, that uh, was because, as he said, he wanted to give some fun to his avatar in-game. So it was a bit depersonalized. But after the possibility of gay romance uh, appeared, uh, he started to take it seriously and personally. He stopped changing partners. He was faithful to Kaiden Alenko. And even, uh, if you can see from the quote, uh, when there was another possibility to have a gay romance with someone else, uh, he did not try it. On this example, we can see how the possibility of playing uh, the gay character changed uh, the way of playing. But there were also the gay gamers who were not interested in it. And as we can see for respondent Pet Petter, uh, there were, were other things uh, in the game which were for him more interesting. Playing the romances was not the goal, uh, not the main goal was to play uh, a good story. Uh, so there are two aspects from the interviews which are important uh, for gay gamers to take uh, the LGBT romances seriously. The LGBT romance must be the integral part of the story. If it is separated, it has much less attention. The game must demonstrate the possibility of LGBT romance in interacting with NPC character. Other way, the gamers can easily miss it because they are not get used to search for such a content in game. So that's the experience with the playable gay character. And the last part of the research was a reflection of the possibilities of the video game medium according to the representation of LGBT people. And as I mentioned at the beginning, video games came uh, with the absolutely new way uh, of view on LGBT minorities. 
the matter of invisible homosexuality appeared to be as useful as incomplete. On the one side, the interview said that it is a good way of moder moderate activism. For others, it is only the false way in, depicting, in de depicting LGBT minority. As you can see on these uh, two quotes, so uh, there is still a tension between the idea uh, how to show homosexuality uh, by non-invasive way and by explicitly as for example films do. But anyway, all the respondents final, uh, finally have seen the video games with LGBT content as the good favor to the LGBT community. But there were also some struggles about the stereotypical uh, marks of LGBT people in BioWare's games. Uh, that, uh, like, for example, this uh, character of Zevran, uh, that this, he's too stereotypical and that he looks like a stereotypical feminine gay. Uh, what was interesting on that is that uh, some gamers were angry that this character was made by designers in this stereotypical way, but they have no problem to practice these stereotypes for their own. Respondent, Vo Respondent Vojta is the example of it. He was very upset from this feminine character. But then, uh, when he was making his own characters, he used a very similar way to demonstrate uh, that his character is homosexual. Uh, he said that he was uh, putting a pink tattoo on uh, his character in Final Fantasy, or that he was uh, driving a pink car in uh, Grand Theft Auto games. From this perspective, you can see that the main problem is when the official designer makes a character in a stereotypical way, not the gamer. In that case, it is only a stylization very similar to the one which is normally seen on gay prides in the uh, real world. So these are the few marks uh, of the research. This research showed many different options uh, for someone. It's important to be active in proclaiming the homosexuality in PC games. For others, uh, it is the worst approach ever. Somebody was moved uh, by the option of LGBT romances in uh, RPG games, but for the others, it was only a good compliment. But as screenwriter David Geider said, gay gaming is not only for homosexuals. As he noticed, 24% of gamers are trying to play homosexual romances, no matter which gender or sexual orientation they are. And that is the point. People want to discover the video games, uh, to disc in video games. And if they can discover the non-conformal content in this way, this puts an effect of this on themselves. Then nobody can say that games are the medium only, which only makes fun. But as the second part of the analysis shows also in the code of the invisible homosexuality in PC games, there are the gaps. Some characters are still wrapped in heteronormative views. Some uh, are a little bit gay upgraded to be much more visible in their sexual preferences. According to the interviews, there is one thing which is determining in the case of the representation of LGBT people. In video games, if you can build a character yourself, then you are the master. Never mind how will it look like, but if somebody will do that for you, especially in a negative way, uh, then Prepare for battle. That leads to the idea which presented Alexander Mitch on the server Gay Gamer Net, that games will be still more made by players, by the sets of special editors, and so on. And sexual orientation maybe will be one day, look, m the sexual orientation maybe uh, look like a special cocktail without bubble borders, which will be individual for each player. So that's all from me, thank you. Thank you.